Hello, this is Engineering Statistics and Linear Algebra 18 EC44, Module 4, Lecture 1, Vector Spaces and Subspaces. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about what are vector spaces and some of the examples corresponding to that and what are subspaces and some of the examples, again, corresponding to the subspaces. I'm Dr. Nurullah Sharif, Professor and Head, EC, CCAP Institute of Engineering and Technology. Let us see what a vector space or just a space is. A vector space is a set of vectors together with rules for vector addition and multiplication of the vector by real numbers. So the key words here are the set of vectors and the two different rules, vector addition and the multiplication of a vector by a real number. Together, these two rules are known as linear combination. If we have two vectors, x and y, then vector addition just corresponds to x plus y, and the multiplication of a vector x by a scalar c corresponds to cx. The addition and the multiplication, that is the vector addition and the multiplication of a vector with a scalar will always produce a vector in the same vector space. Linear combination of the vectors Again, with corresponds to vector addition and the multiplication of a vector by the real number will produce a vector which is cx plus dy. Let us consider some of the most important vector spaces. First, R1 is a one-dimensional space. R2 is a two-dimensional space represented by xy plane. R3 is a three-dimensional space which can be represented by the xyz Cartesian coordinates, the r theta z cylindrical coordinates, or the r theta phi spherical coordinates. Going on the same lines, we can have Rn, which is a n-dimensional space, which is definitely difficult to comprehend. Each of these vector spaces can be represented by the column vectors with n rows, where n corresponds to the dimension. Let us see some of the properties which the vectors, which belong to the vector space, should satisfy. First, x plus y is equal to y plus x. Second one, x plus y plus z is equal to x plus y plus z. Third one, if we have a unique zero vector, and if we add that zero vector to a vector x, then the resultant will be the vector x itself for all x. Fourth, for each x, there is a unique vector, which is the negation of the x itself, which is minus x. And if we add these two, x and the negation of x, we'll get the zero vector. If we multiply a real number or a scalar one with a vector x, the resultant will be x. The sixth property corresponds to C1, C2, two real numbers or scalars multiplied together, and then that is multiplied to the vector x is same as C2 multiplied with the vector x, and then we multiply Cx with the Cx, C2x. The property 7 will just correspond to C into x plus y is equal to Cx plus Cy. The property 8 is C1 plus C2 into x is equal to C1x plus C2x. So these are the eight conditions or properties which the vectors should satisfy in a vector space. Let us consider some of the examples for the vector space. First, the infinite dimensional space R infinity. This corresponds to having infinitely many components, as in, for example, x is equal to 1, comma 2, comma 1, comma 2, dot, 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 dot. So here the dot, dot, dot is specified for the infinitely many components. The loss of vector addition and multiplication of a vector with a scalar will remain 
same because Rn3t corresponds to vector space. The second example is a space of 3 by 2 matrix. Here the vectors are represented by matrices. We can add the matrices. We can have zero matrix. This space is almost same as r to the power 6 because we have six entries in the 3 by 2 matrix. The six components here are arranged in a rectangular form rather than in the form of the columns. You can have a choice of different values of yum and yen as an example, wherein the vector space will be of the size yum by n matrix. The third example is the space of functions fx. Here we can have functions f that are defined on any fixed interval. For example, 0 less than x less than 1. This space will include fx is equal to x square, gx equal to sin x. You can have their sum f plus g of x is equal to x square plus sin x. And all the multiples of either fx or gx, will, which might be 3x square and minus sin x, etc. Now let us consider what a vector subspace is. A subspace of a vector space is a non-empty subset that satisfies the requirements of the vector space. That is, it should satisfy the linear combination rules of vector addition and multiplication of a vector by a scalar. If we add any vectors x and y in the subspace, the resultant will always be in a subspace. If we multiply a vector x in the subspace by the scalar x, again cx will be in the subspace. A subspace in a subset under such conditions is known as closed under addition and scalar multiplication. The above operations corresponding to the linear combinations and the different eight required properties are satisfied both in the larger space as well as in every subspace. We need to note very importantly that zero vectors will belong to every subspace. The zero vector will belong to every subspace. This comes from the rule two of matrix uh, multiplication of a vector c, a vector x with a scalar c, choosing the value of c equal to 0. Let us consider a vector subset which is otherwise not a subspace. First, all vectors in R square whose components are positive are 0. This corresponds to the first quadrant as specified in the figure. This refers to x greater than 0 and y greater than 0, which naturally corresponds to first quadrant. As it is clear, this does not satisfy the rule 2 because if x is equal to 1 comma 1, and which is in the first quadrant, and if c is chosen equal to minus 1, then cx will be equal to minus 1 minus 1, which is not in the first quadrant, but in the third quadrant. The second example here is the vectors which will be in the first quadrant plus the third quadrant. This satisfies the rule two, that is multiplication of a vector with a scalar c, but does not satisfy the vector addition rule one. If we consider x is equal to 1 comma 2, which is in the first quadrant, and y is equal to minus 2 comma minus 1, which is in the third quadrant, then it belongs to the vector subset. But if we add x plus y, the resultant will be minus 1 comma 1, which does not belong to the subset. Hence, this is not a subspace. Let us consider now a subset which is also a subspace. 
One of the examples is the consider the three by three matrices. The set of lower triangular matrices or the set of upper triangular matrices or the set of symmetric matrices, all these are vector subsets as well as vector subspaces because they satisfy the rule one and two, that is vector addition, as well as multiplication of a vector with the scalar C. And that is the same thing which is mentioned over here. If we add A plus B, and if we multiply C with A, then we see that the lower triangle, uh, the lower triangular matrix A and B will lead to the lower triangle again and the symmetric matrices A and B will lead to a symmetric matrix. Of course, in all the subspaces, zero matrix is always present. Zero vector is always present. With this, we come to the end of the lecture one. We will take up the, in the lecture two, column space and null spaces.